Hi guys, welcome back to another video of our Selenium C Sharp the .NET courses that we have been talking. And in this video, we are going to talk about how to work with spec flows of C Sharp and how we can discover our test or make the test to be discovered uh, in the Visual Studio that we couldn't able to do in our last video and how we can efficiently write uh, some of the scenarios in BDD with .NET Core as well. So in our last video, we actually installed the spec flow, right? I mean, we, we basically installed the spec flow uh, in the dependencies and we couldn't able to see our test being discovered or it's not even showing up at the moment. That's, that is the major problem that we have uh, in our test. So in order for the test to discover our, uh, or the text explorer to recognize our test, all we need to do is we need to add additional uh, two packages basically. So if I just go to the manage NuGet package within this manage NuGet package, if you just search for spec flow, so we installed the spec flow in our earlier video, but we also need to install two more pro uh, repositories or two more uh, plugins within our project. One is the specflow tools dot ms build dot generation. So this is the package to enable the code behind file generation during build time. So this is one of the important packages that we need to be installing. I'm not sure why they are two different package basically by the specflow team because anyways we really require that. But maybe specflow team thought that MS build is not going to be the only build generation tool. Maybe there will be another build generation tools which can be used. So at the moment we are using MS build here. Maybe there are some other way to do it in future. That's why they have a separate package altogether. And we are also using n unit for our testing framework and you can see that there are different uh, uh testing framework support by specflow like n unit x unit ms test so you can see that uh, specflow team are pretty aware that they need to support this uh, in a very very different fashion altogether like completely segregated altogether so we are going to use the specflow n unit that's what we ha are using as a test engine so we are going to install this particular package as well. So we installed two packages over here, apart from the specflow package that we installed in our earlier uh, lecture. So I'm just going to stop this guy over here. And now you can see that I didn't even build this project and Visual Studio's live test discoverability feature, which is available in Visual Studio for a pretty long time right now, it automatically identified the login feature for us over here. So you can see that even if I just double click it. So even if you close this feature file, if you just double click it, it will automatically bring the feature file for you. So now specflow is recognized or the specflow scenario test are being recognized within Visual Studio by installing those two packages. So that's super important. So you, you need to basically have this. So this were not the case in the uh, specflow full version uh, while using with the full version of .NET, the .NET 4 framework. And that's exactly what's going to happen while you learn the course in the advanced series. If you are watching this video in the advanced series, then in the following video of this course, you might be seeing that I will be using the older version of spec flows. But if you are using my latest version of code and you are applying that to the older version of spec flow, you might be seeing a different behavior altogether. But the whole idea in here is the change which the team in specflow has made is a breaking change. So you need to install these two additional packages for making your test to be discovered on the test explorer. But if you're just using my existing uh, project uh, repo of the advanced series, then you will still be using the older packages of the spec flows. Uh, and then you should be seeing the test being discovered in Visual Studio. But if you're using Visual Studio 2019, and if you have the uh, spec flow plugin for Visual Studio 2019, you might not see that behavior consistent, like the spec flow test being discovered uh, in the Visual Studio pretty quickly or pretty correctly. Uh, so make sure that if you're using the newer version of spec flows, you should be really, really, really using this fashion. And I have heard many questions from students asking why is my test is not being discovered in test explorer where they will be using or referring to my older versions of our older videos uh, on the BDD spec flow which is available on a different series and they will be trying to use the newer version of spec flow and you, they should be seeing a complete contrast experience so this contrast experience will never be happening 
from this video i believe that's what this video series is all about so that's why i'm creating this video series so now we are actually talking about the up-to-date versions of specflows visual studio c sharp dotnet core so hopefully this video will remain unchanged probably another four years probably uh, but who knows things are changing pretty quickly at the moment uh, so i guess uh, uh, that's what is the time frame which I can really rely on right now. So yeah, so this is what it is. I mean, this is how the test has been discovered in Specflows uh, uh, C Sharp .NET with .NET Core uh, with the, these two new packages need to be added. And once this is added, you can see the test has been coming through, which is pretty good. And now what we can do is we can actually start writing the scenarios in BDD and we can see how we can actually uh, perform an action. So all I'm going to do is, once again, as I told you, uh, I'm actually going to go to my GitHub repo of Exit Automation, and I'm going to write a scenario which I have already written in this repository for pretty long time right now. I mean, I've been talking about the same kind of scenarios, so I'm not going to really, really write the same scenario once again, because it's, it's something which we have written uh, many times, and we have discussed about it. So I'm not just going to uh, do a writing of the same scenario once again rather i'm just going to copy the feature with the scenarios from here and i'm going to paste it over here so you can see that this is the feature uh login feature check if login functionality works that's what we wrote in our earlier video as well and we uh, i'm saying that given i navigate to the application and i enter the username and password and i click the login then i should see the user logged into the application very straightforward test right so the uh, username is admin and the password is, I guess it's password, right? So now we're gonna start implementing this particular scenario and we'll see how we can do that. So for doing that, I'm just gonna right click and you can see that now we have an option called generate step definitions. So this was not available for us in our earlier video, but now we could see that this option is coming through as well, which is pretty good. So now once I hit this generate step definitions, you can see that there is a box coming in and it shows us like, uh, do you want to generate step definition for all these steps which is sitting over here i guess this is a good one because i have no implementation of any of these step definition at the moment so i'm just going to copy all the methods to the clipboard and i'm just going to go to the login steps over here and i'm going to paste the step definitions over here so this is the file that we created in our last video and now i'm just going to make use of it right now so you can see that basically our steps are now mapped so if i just do and function, I mean, if I do an F12, you can see that it takes me to this particular step definition. Similarly, if I go to the, and I click login, if I do an F12, it takes me to this particular step definition. So, which means the feature files steps is being mapped to the step definitions of the login steps.cs file in our project, which is pretty good. So now, we need to start doing an implementation part, right? So for doing that, all I'm going to do is basically, I'm just going to go to our uh, unit test one dot uh, CS file. And here, what we're doing at the moment is like, we are, we are just doing this one, right? Driver dot navigate dot go to URL. So this is where our driver instance is actually sitting. So I'm just going to go this, I'm going to say driver helper. I'm just going to basically inherit the driver uh, helper. And here I'm saying, that I navigate to the application. So because we have the driver on this particular class file, so I can just copy paste the code over here. So you can see that the implementation is just coming through over here on the step definition files. And then I'm saying, given I enter the username and password, but here you have something called as a table. So basically, if you see the feature file, the login you can see that we're actually using something like a, a table format on the uh, on the step definition so basically there is a separate video altogether for the tables uh, and working with tables and uh, uh, scenario outlines and working with dynamic tables and stuff in the BDD with specflow series it's vast and we have covered it from the complete ground up but i'm not going to really cover that particular detail at least because it's a duplicate effort i have already covered there a lot and i can put the descriptions uh, uh link on the description below you can go ahead and watch there but the thing is this particular uh 
a table that we're talking about over here is basically a spec flow table we can quickly do an implementation but if you want to really learn a lot more detail about it you can just go and watch that particular video uh, but at the moment in order to work with the tables all we're going to do is you can see that we have the username and password columns and we need to read that particular value the easiest way of doing it is adding another uh, package if i just go to the manage nuget package and just search for spec flow there is something called as assist.dynamics uh, package so this one specflow.assist.dynamics package so if you install this particular package it is going to do a create dynamic instance for you so uh, let me just install this guy over here hit ok and even this one is dotnet core compatible uh, because it's a dotnet 2.0 standard uh, so i'm just going to install that and now if I just go over here, in order to work with the table, all I'm going to do is, I'm just going to do this. Because it's going to be a dynamic uh, table, it's going to be using a dynamic keyword. Uh, and I'm going to say dynamic data is equal to table, which is this particular table, dot create dynamic instance. So this particular method is basically going to read the table dynamically for me. And then I can just get the particular uh, table data using its column name which is amazing so all i'm going to do is i need to enter the username and password so if you go to the unit test onecs file over here uh, in order to enter the username and password we performed this so first of all we click the home uh, uh, page click login link i think we need to change the feature file a bit uh, and I click the login link, right? That's what we did. So we navigated to the application, we click the login link, we enter the username and password, we click the login button, uh, and then I should see the user logged into the application. Anyways, so we need to implement this guy. So in order to implement just one step definition, just do an F12 over here, and spec flow will tell you that no matching step definition found for this steps. Do you want to copy this step definition skeleton uh, to the clipboard? I'm going to say yes, which means I can just uh, write this particular step definition over here like that. Pretty cool, right? And once we have this guy, I can now do a copy paste of this particular thing as well. So let me just copy these two class files and I'm going to paste it on the top over here oops like that and we need to add the references control dot so it's been added and now I can go to the home page of click login so because we are going to do a login click over here so I'm going to do that and then we need to enter the username and password so by entering the username and password if you remember on the unit test1.cs file we just called this right login page of enter username and password over here but instead of entering it from the hard-coded value like what we have at the moment over here the beauty of spec flow is you define the data basically sitting on the scenarios uh, on the feature file and then you can pass those value into this particular uh, into this particular step definitions on the cs file uh, so you can use the dynamic data, which I was talking about data dot. Um, so it's a username, right? So that's the column name. So data dot username. And you can see that I'm actually doing a casting over here, like string casting. So if I just don't do that, uh, basically this is a dynamic keyword and if it is not in string probably it will throw you an error so it is safer to do an explicit casting so that you don't you don't really end up in those kinds of problem as well so data dot password is going to be the password which i'm going to be entering for the password which is all good and once i have this um, over here i can then just uh, perform a click uh, login so if I just go to the user one you can uh, unit test one you can see that I have the click login as well and then assert that the home page is log off exist right so this is the assertion as well 
and because this assert doesn't really exist on this class file so i need to add the reference for that as well pretty cool so whatever code that we just wrote on the unit test onecs file is now being converted to a specflows step definition file very very easily over here and now if i try to run this code this should technically do exactly the same operation like how it did for us on the unit test onecs file as well but it's throwing us an error at the moment the reason being if you remember we actually had what is called as a setup on the unit test one dot cs file where we actually set up the chrome driver options and stuff we have not did that on this particular code so this test is technically going to fail and this has to be fixed by a different operation which we'll be doing in our next video talk to you on our next video to fix this problem